I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's satisfying. It's gratifying. It's humbling. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I, I think it just makes us hungry for more, you know? Well, <clears throat> I mean, look, uh, I, I tell people all the time when we were in the basement writing songs because <laughs> labels were telling us that, you know, we needed more songs or this or that. We didn't figure all this. Yeah. You know? I read a lot of hit paraders and circus magazines and Rolling Stones in my time, but I never put all this together. So when you do finally get on an airplane and you show up in somewhere like Japan, basically the only time I had ever heard of Japan or known anything about it would be something like history class or geography or something in school. And I don't even know if I paid attention. You know what I mean? I think samurais and ninjas were about as close as I can. And now by this time, I mean, I've taken it all in. I mean, it's my place. And I learn so much every time I go there, uh, not only about the human condition, uh, but, but life and perspective on life and, and these sorts of things. So like Corey said, we can never get enough of Japan. And we, every time we make a little bit more breakthrough, it leaves us wanting more. Like, I'm friends. I haven't seen him in a long time, but I am friends with uh, uh, Yoshiki uh, from X. And uh, I've seen the things that he's done in Japan, and that only makes me hungry to try and, you know, reach out to more and more people. When I can see a, a local musician like him and the things that he's done, uh, you know, I'm just like, whoa, there's so there's so much more that Slipknot can do in Japan than we've done. So it's very exciting to get us some more every time. Right? Can't top that. Yeah, that's beautifully said. Beautifully said. (laughs) Uh, We were forced. (laughs) No, I mean, obviously, I mean, there was a mutual respect there. Um, We were were fans of his, um, you know, when he started, you know, and he was uh, he was one of those artists that was pushing the boundaries musically, um, uh, energetically, artistically. I mean, he was someone who was so cutting edge and yet so rough. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was it was something that we were almost kindred spirits in that way. Um, we have always put a lot of emphasis on marrying the art with the music and the and that that kind of pagan vibe. So for us, it was almost like two old dogs sniffing each other's ass, you know. Um, but at the same time, over the years, you know, we've we've both taken risks. We've both come a long way. We've taken our hits, um, and we've stood back up. So, you know, putting this tour together was, um, you know, it, it just kind of made sense in a lot of ways. And you know. Being able to, you know, have him come over for Not Fest Japan, I, I think, is a huge, huge thing. Um, just for the fact that, again, it shows that our music, our styles of music, in a general sense, cross international lines, and they respond to people in a certain way that a lot of other music does not. You know, in, in a way, you know, you can almost see where other types of music kind of stop at the, at the, at the borders. Uh, people just don't understand it, but our music for some reason has crossed a, a, you know, a, a, around the world. And um, it's something we're very proud of, and it's, and it's good to have him come over there as, as well for, for not just not Fest Japan. <laughs> Maybe it's time you want the tables turned Cause in the interest of all evolved I got the problem solved And the friends is guilty Battle the gal mates I'm a way of air to try Stop dropping off You went down from the get-go Bit my butter To my gosh Stuck away Scared of me now Then you tell me that I thought Always is and never was Don't measure me to pay some vinegar Don't tell me I'm smitten Think I fear you bullshit Just another dumb bum Dropping up the shit Here's another way to break Through the noise